people, welcome to TDA, the day after the home of popular culture, as defined by the actual culture. Can everyone please introduce themselves? Everyone. It's me, Margs. <laughs> 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 Dead there, you know what I'm going already. <laughs> You're not six foot of nothing today. Yeah, I am six foot plus a pure temptation. Big Marshall East Side. Uh, wow. Oh, bad B. <laughs> okay, not the tongue out. Child. Okay, no, I like that for you. Embrace it. Um, and your beautiful people is Big Koi defending your right to fuck it up when I have the energy. I have the energy today, though. I'm tired today. No, I have energy. I saw some cool shit yesterday. I got waves by five. Um, I was like, yeah, I had a, I had an all right day yesterday. You know? oh, no, I had an all right day. But you were tired? I'm just tired. It was long. I didn't sleep till late. I didn't sleep till three. Who are you talking to? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, you make me laugh, you know. I can, next, next question. I can kind of see why girls destroy their lives by talking to you. I can I've never it. destroyed anybody's life. Not a female, anyway. Okay, fair. But maybe you just don't think it's a strain. Like, have you made a girl cry? I feel like you made girls cry. And I feel like you don't even care. When you say make a girl cry, that sounds like, like, I haven't made a girl cry. If a girl's decided to cry oh my gosh. because of oh, my no, actions, I'm not, do you know what? I'm that's done. not me making a girl oh cry. Oh my gosh, I don't even understand. I don't understand. If like When I think about women, I just think, why, why are like people not dedicated to making the women in their lives smile? Like, in my head, I just don't get it. Like, don't you like when women are just happy? Happy wife, happy life, and all these things. Yeah, but you're not married, I guess. No, but I'm just saying, I'm a, look, I am enjoy making people happy in general. You know what I'm trying to say? I'm just like that. I, like, I want to bring joy to the world. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, women deserve it as well. But I'm just saying... I don't feel like you spoil women, though. Like, even when I ask, do you go on dates? You were like... I do date, but I'm not a spoiler. Because I'm not a spoiler, babe, because at the same time, I don't like... I'm not materialistic. I don't like materialistic people. So if you just want gifts and stuff... But that's not what I mean like, by spoiling. It's funny you jump to that. I just well, mean how do you like... Spoil, I, I, see, this is what I'm trying to say. you got to teach me something, now. We can have a look. Okay. How do I spoil you if, I, if I'm not, like, showering you with gifts and yeah, things? Yeah, because there's a lot of people you? that don't have money ever. I think it's like, like, how would you spoil your daughter? It's not like you're always buying her gifts. That's one way in which you can do it. Well, if you spoil your daughter by giving her anything she wants. Yeah, but it's not just gifts. It's also time. It's also giving her attention. Like, Daddy, I want to change something. You spoil about always responding to her, always I mean, giving her the time. I'm not saying that you're that's not, your daughter. That's not spoiling. Giving someone no, attention but, is not spoiling. No, it. yes, it is. You can. That, how do you think people get spoiled? Do you think it's just gifts? It's when the parents are overly attentive to the kid, so the kid thinks that everybody in the world should be overly attentive to them. So, and that's what you want to do to a grown woman? No, I'm saying, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, can't you no. see her uh, problems are going to arise? No, but... No, but I feel like it's not like the whole world is doing it and she's not a child, so she's not going to naturally think it's the whole world. But I'm saying her man, her person, it will be nice if she feels super important to them. I put that in the whole clip, please. Don't, like, I'm infantilizing children and women. <laughs> but, like, yeah, like, I feel like, it, I feel like something about you, one of those guys that will put a bit of effort in at the beginning and then wean her off the effort. But then she's now still hooked on the first high. And now she's in a relationship that's not going nowhere, giving you sex. And, yeah, man, I just want better for her. No, I don't. I don't. Um, no, I don't come in hard and fast and then and then change up. And I don't do all the extra stuff. Oh, yeah. I, 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 just, I like to stay stay, stay the same, even killed, consistent. So you know you're gonna get from me. Gonna Have get. you ever put a lot of effort in before at the beginning? What would you call effort? Like for me, effort would be like f- like weird things like I don't know, sending flowers to your yard and stuff like you that. You send yeah. people flowers. No, I have done though. I've sent someone flowers. What someone, kind of flowers? Was it roses? Yeah, okay. someone made someone articulated and made it aware to me that they enjoy those kind of things. So I've done it, but I didn't. I don't. I don't want to do it again. I didn't care for it. It's like you didn't feel nice making it happy. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what was paining you? That's what upset you, yeah. <laughs> Yo. No, I know. Other, it's, it's people like things, and you can do it for them to make yeah. them happy. You can. I love making other people happy, no matter who who I'm around. I, I mean, as long as it's not at my like fucks me up and makes me feel like I've done too much. But like people being happy around you just is a nice feeling. Yeah, but just like, but no things. boundaries, guys. But just yeah. like funny things. Like, I think that's that extra stuff like that. That will really be weird. Like oh, bought you flowers. Oh, like you know, like. I don't know, like just going funny places and sourcing weird little funny weird things that you like. Or yeah, do you do that? No, that's what I'm saying. That would be extra effort. That would be a lot. Of you know, but do you, here's a funny thing. I know we live in a world where we celebrate to, um, toxic shit, yeah. But like, you know, don't you feel good when you like just get that gift that they really wanted or you really like made them smile? Or you really like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you like someone, you like doing something nice for them. Yeah. You know saying, so. so these this girl you're speaking to to three a.m. You didn't like her. 
I wasn't speaking. No, it was, it, you've misconstrued the story. I can't even remember what was going on until 3 a.m. But okay. I was up late. Okay, cool. Fair enough. I have a. a but it was. It was. Um. Everything was above board. It wasn't nothing like that. Nothing untoward. Are you single right now? Yeah. Okay. Do you know how many guys that ask that and they don't, can't really give an answer, especially if cameras are on? You mean? Yeah. No. Yeah. I can give an answer. And the real answer is it wouldn't make a difference. All right. Well, guys, let's jump straight into the morning <laughs> after. <laughs> 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 You know what? You should be big mugs defending people's rights to fuck it up. You should, you should really, you should really take that to the bank. Um, so the morning, I feel like this. We know what this segment is about. This is where we invite people on to answer, not for their crimes, but if things have happened recently. The morning after is where you clear your mind and think, yo, let's evaluate. Do you know mm. what I mean? So, I guess we're being asked to be in, on the morning after since Esther's shaking bum in Nigeria. Yeah. So, do you want to start? Do I want to start? I'm gonna start. Um, <laughs> we're just going to just evaluate everything that's, that's we're just going to like everything that's going on like we're bringing ourselves to the morning after because we've stopped the show twice and it's been two weeks big man <laughs> like Brent fix up like what's, what's, going <laughs> what's going on like we stopped the show twice I even called Brent and I was like do you know what Brent I'm done we got to take a break we got to pay me more no I'm joking let, no jokes right? let, me, let me be serious I was like Brent something it's not feeling right Some, we got to do something about this this doesn't feel right like, it's been back-to-back difficult conversations. It's been back-to-back um, long-ass debates. Um, this is all quite new, I think, for me, for Esther. You've been, in this, you've been in this world as well, but I guess it's new for you as well. I feel like we all kind of felt like it was a new experience than we were experiencing Yeah, I'm not usually that like, embroiled in controversy, I don't think. There's types of controversy, yeah, for sure. Mm. Yeah, you were the guy that said that um, if your girl wanted to free, uh, wanted to fuck somebody, you'd do a threesome with your boy. So I think you did. That is not controversial. All right, let's let's we'll do with you. <laughs> Can I do done out here today? <laughs> um, but yeah, let's let's go. It's gonna be so hard because me and Muggs know how to break out into jokes just to deal with life. But yeah, I feel like we're bringing the day after to the to the morning after. Well, first and foremost, then we will apologize for our inconsistencies because yeah. we're supposed to be on every day. And and we haven't been. Yeah. You get me? I think it's because, like, with this, it's such a passion-led thing. And when it wasn't feeling right, we all had to, like, figure out why. And now we do. I feel like now we're figuring it out. And either way, even if we can't figure it out, we can't be taking breaks like that. That's crazy. Well, I mean, it is what it is. So, basically, we've got the ball rolling. Things are going well. We're recording every day. And then one yeah. of the co-hosts gets involved in... Pass out, absolute. In pass out yeah. online. And obviously things just gone kind of downhill from there. You know what I'm trying to say? So yeah. obviously lots of people have been offended and hurt and stuff. So we have to reconvene, reevaluate what we're doing. That's yeah. why we took some time off just to know how to move forward. Yeah. And then that brought us to the place where we had the the conversation. The episode, the yeah. episode where we had the conversation on camera. Yeah, because our, our thought process was if this wasn't somebody that was in the team, we would talk about it. Mm. So we have to keep the energy consistent. So and at the same time, we're building a platform here to deliver information to people. Yeah. And the stuff that's going on, the fact that the person is on the show and they're involved in it, this is the perfect platform to, to have the conversation. Yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So that's obviously, good. so then we had our conversation and then maybe it's not appeased everybody. Do you know what it is? I, so we spoke about this on the show, so we're not going to do the show again. But I remember me and Esther come in here, we were annoyed just as people who'd seen the tweets or whatever. We walk in and we kind of, like, now you're confronted with a human. Do you know what I mean? And we were just like, we still have to deal with this. Do you know what I mean? But in the on the day it happened, because as somebody was talking to me and I was like, the day it happened, we literally spent three hours trying to, like, discussing it, trying to understand what the point of views were, um, expressing why, how we were angry, how we were disappointed, expressing where we didn't understand and all of that. And so we just decided we weren't filming that day and we'll film the next day. And so that was the episode that we put out, an episode where everyone had kind of gone home and just decided where their stance was and what they felt like they needed to know. So that's what we tried to bring, like... Well, yeah, it's our job to deliver... It's our, it's our job to deliver information, isn't it? Yeah. And we can't, we can't control how you receive it. And obviously, we've got a duty of care to deliver it in, in the right way. You know what I'm trying to say? So yeah. if there's things that people might have felt wasn't addressed properly or wasn't done on there, that is, that's un- that's understandable. And you can do that with hindsight. You can look back and see where you might have missed it or where you might have gone wrong. But at the moment, what we done, what we thought was right. Yeah. 
and, yeah. and, and, and it went how it went. Yeah, because, like, I think the first thing that I really wanted to find out was, not find out, but it was just to be clear about, is that these conversations, you lot have forever have been gaslighting us that those conversations don't happen. They do happen, like, why, so why do you know what I mean like there were so many questions I think Esther obviously had her questions as well Miles you had a question as well of if if it never came to light you would still be in that group and I think what that kind of presents to me is the fact that too many of us are desensitized to to these kind of things you know like how back in the days yeah because obviously I love dance all right I, I call it bashment but apparently you can't call it that anymore mm. um and you know in in it there was a lot of like horrible terms for like people who were gay mm. so now like we don't really do use that but at one point people were so desensitized to like how fucked up that was that you'd be talking do you know what i mean yeah, yeah, and yeah. but we had to do something about it we can't just be like we're desensitized and it made me realize you're like when it comes to speaking down on certain community certain parts of the black community we're still very desensitized to how it is like remember i made a point if it was a football team and you you actually deeped it you like when if it was a football team if somebody says something mad about your football team you would either defend it or leave you would leave that space right mm. it's kind of fucked up that we don't all have that same energy for when black women are being spoken about or trans people or, do you know what i mean it's just it's it's mad i feel like that's what i got from it because like we said what this you said was that he never um he didn't actually say something disparaging but he retweeted so he was in the group and that that was his, his crime so I don't know, man. It's just it's difficult. But as a team, we were trying to process it in real time and figure out what the best what the best thing to do was, how to keep you guys involved in our decision making, how to make sure that everyone felt heard, and yeah, you can. It's it's, it's been exhausting. It's been difficult. It's been really really difficult. It's been really difficult. But yeah. Well, um, I believe. Well, yeah. It has been difficult, but obviously we're still here. We're going to sort out. We're still going to deliver great content for you like every single day. But ultimately, what's important to us here is that everybody, especially people in the black community, are heard in a way that no other platform listens. Do you know what I mean? We, that's what we. That's why we do these five a.m. That's why we do it every day. Um, I, I don't, yeah, man. I look raggy in the morning, but I do this because I feel like what we're trying to say in the morning is mad important. Do you know what I mean? This is different from all our different pieces of content. Oh, 100%. This is like a, this is important to us, you know, like, like a year plus we've been working towards this. And we're not going to, at the moment where we need to speak up and, and make you guys feel like we're listening, not do that. That's never our intention. So if that's what we did, we fucked up. We fucked up. If that's what we did, if that's how you lot feel, then what we were trying to do didn't work. And so we're going to learn from that and move forward and do better. Um, and if we don't, flog Margs, man. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, for real, I, I, I joke to deal with life. In short, we've been a tad bit inconsistent and we want to make it up to you. So moving forward all the way up till June the 1st, all episodes will be available on YouTube, the full episode. But we've got a bit more for you. What's happening after June 1st? Well, after June the 1st, we're going to be moving the show over to Patreon. And that's where you're going to come and get the full immersive experience. So you need to make sure you come, you sign up, and like, you get to do stuff like watch us live every day, mm -hmm. take part of the show, participate, send in your queries and your questions and all these good stuff. And merchandise. Merchandising, all of that. So yeah, now we're looking forward to bringing you up so much more. And it's for everybody that wants to take part in making TDA the dopest daily show on... In the, in the world Yeah I have basically. to correct people It's not a pod guys It's yeah. different over here No we're broadcasting We're giving you information This is where you need to come For your information you know if, you don't, I mean? if you don't come and see us In the morning What do you even know? <laughs> Honestly You're unqualified <laughs> you know for the day say, so. You don't know what's happening in Russia We, we will tell we you We will tell things. you What's happening do in Russia Do you know what Russia? I mean? Putin is that his name? <laughs> yeah that man there yeah. He tells me what's happening Early in the morning And I give, I give it to you guys We've even got a Nigerian correspondent That lives in London That lives in London <laughs> Qualified <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So yeah yeah, we definitely don't want you guys to miss that. We're super excited for what's coming up. So yeah, trust us. Trust Mark. Look at your skincare routine. Mm -hmm. Trust him. And trust me and it acts about me. <laughs> but yeah, I think trust that's me. it. And remember, you can listen to the episodes um, everywhere. 7 p.m.? Yeah, 7 Monday p.m. To Monday to Friday. There you go. Wherever you listen to your podcast. But remember, it's not a podcast. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> we can ask for more money when we don't when we say that. So it's calm. Um, but yeah, let's jump straight into what you saying. Oh, child. Oh, child. Yeah. Yeah.
this week is going to, yeah, this whole experience is one to remember for sure. Um, Tim Westwood allegations. Here's my thing. Yeah. Because they gave me a whole script and a whole structure, but sometimes you don't need that because I've been to uni. <laughs> I've been to Freshers. Yeah. And I remember seeing him at the Freshers and everything these women described, not in terms of, I never had an engagement with him. I've never, you know, he, I don't remember him anything in any kind of way like that but there was a lot of consistencies in how I feel like they described him um and yeah there's so much to jump into about this but basically for those who don't know BBC3 I believe put out a documentary about Tim Westwood um it had six or seven women who shared their stories of um sexual misconduct feeling inappropriate relationships um where they felt like the dynamics were fucked essentially um and just like really unfortunate experiences that they had like horrible experiences that they had at his hands um all of the women were anonymous i think that was important because and i think it was important because of what happened afterwards but before i jump into that how do you feel about it um well yeah they obviously their their the allegations this is what has been alleged to have been done mm. i think yeah, it's just I just think it's I just think it's disgusting. If it's true, mm. if, if if it's true, then yeah, I mean, that's just it. Just don't even get no worse than that, innit? Like it's horrible. Yeah, it's it's it's, 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 it's horrible. It's, it's 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 a mad one. But like, my thing is like, what happens? What happens now? Does he get? Is there like, like is there any way like he can get in police trouble, like criminal proceedings or anything like this? I don't know. Um, I feel like in situations like this, what happens is that it, it starts a flood, because that's what I'm saying. So more people are going to so come more out. people come forward, but it seems like, and this is from my very very limited experience in legal stuff. I I, like, I just I couldn't even tell you, but for it to be, it would ha- for it to be rape, there has to be you know coercion. There has to be um, a lack of consent, right? Mm. And for it to be pedophilia, I think they have to be under the age of sixteen. Yeah, the women. Um, Definitely, ex- are ex- the women, from what I remember, were like over the age of 16, yeah, they like were 17, old. 19 and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I feel like there was definitely a power dynamic where abuse could, ha- you know, abuse. They, 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 well, they, they, abuse did happen, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It's abuse about, happened. Well, it's, it's not about, it's not, it's not, it's, it's not, about it's not paedophilia because they're, they're over age. They're over know? 18. And even though no one didn't say no, no one didn't say yes. So it's a case of whether it's consensual could be, it's something that, it's something that could be argued because, yeah. because of the abuse of power. It's because that's, of the, it's because of the position that he's put people in, isn't it? Because yes. I don't think it's got anything to do with age. I was yeah. talking about, I suppose we talked about this last time. I don't think it's got anything to do with age. I think like people don't understand of even like forget now, like even like back in the day, I don't think they understand the level of celebrity that that he was. Tim you know what I'm trying yeah, to say? Because yeah. there weren't no internet, so imagine yeah. being that famous now without the internet. So like you're really famous. This is in the streets. Yeah, you're yeah. a household name, and there's not even no way to connect the houses. Yeah, yeah. Like, what are yeah, you talking no, about? Do you get me? So this was a big. This was this 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 was a big deal, wasn't it? And any famous person, superstar, even you as an adult, if you've got someone that you're infatuated with in a yeah. sense of. Like um, I don't know, Man Crush Monday kind of thing. Someone that that you actually look up to and yeah. and admire and yeah, like, yeah. like you get what I'm trying to say. Like yeah, really, I'm really saying. like infatuated with. If you managed to be in a situation where you was in a room with them and they walked into a bathroom and then they came out t- but totally naked, butt naked, yeah. yeah, you're not gonna know what to. Hundred percent. Like, how do you handle this situation? Do you get what I'm trying to say? Like, I'll, what do I even do here? Am I even allowed to say no? Like, this person's famous. Am I allowed yeah. to say no? Am I allowed to make a big scene? Like, if I say stop... Would anyone if, believe me? Yeah, if I yeah. say no, is he going to listen to me? If I scream and think that, like, he's, the man's come yeah. out butt naked. He's a yeah. psycho. He, yeah. Is he going to grab my hand and put my hand around my mouth and tell yeah. me to shut... Like, so when I'm in this situation here, I don't know what to do in it. So yeah. anything I do in it, you can't really... You can't really take with that. So to say that it, it wasn't rape, because it, like, it's... They're not in control of that situation. And then the younger you are, you, you can't even... Yeah, you can't even like. Do you get what I'm trying to say? That so 100%. it's proper. It's, it's proper. It's proper fucked up what he's done, and I mean like, I don't know how it, how it, how it boils down to, but whatever it is, it's wrong, isn't it? You know what I'm trying to say, and that's why they put it out how they have so it can go out there. So it can, whether it, if it can't it's go start, into the court yeah. of law, it can go into the court of public, public opinion. Public opinion, and the damage can be done. Do you get what I'm saying? But everything you said was perfect in my opinion. Like everything you said, I feel like people. So the reason why pedophilia is wrong is because even if a child says yes, the power dynamic means that that yes can't really be a yes. Yeah. So it's about power dynamics. And when you're in a space with someone who is 
in any way in which that they are, there's an unfair advantage that they have, we need to weigh that into the situation, right? Mm-hmm. So if it's somebody who is your boss, power dynamic there is, is really strong. If it's somebody who, at one point, the power dynamic between white people and black people was so fucked up that, yeah, any engagement that they would have would be, you have to think, is, does this person really want this? Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, this is that, obviously, I'm talking about slavery times or whatever, but I feel like when people are trying to, de- um, like, kind of, the reason why I said it was good that these women were anonymous is because soon after there was a discussion, a discussion I felt like was really insensitive, like a discussion of um, what kind of abuse this was and, and all of that stuff. And I think, yeah, that, that stuff is important. But as a black woman, there seems to be a readiness to take away from us any protection, any kind of sense of, it's like we're sexualized super early like super duper early. So it's almost like we even other women will say, yeah, you want it. It's it just feels really unhealthy. It feels really, really bad. And what are they saying? Like you wanted it because you was there. Yeah, like, yeah, really like the, it's like they 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 put the onus on the victim in the situation. You, like I said, if you go back to that same scenario, yeah. Yeah. Even if you was with someone, yeah. Yeah. Even if you was with someone and your intention, yeah, was to be around them and, and it's on the cards, you might sleep with them. I'm yeah, guessing this yeah. person, I'm gonna sleep with them. When you go back to that yard to chill out and he walks into the toilet, you think he's gone to use the toilet yeah, and yeah. he comes, comes out, out butt, butt naked. naked. Yeah. You're still saying, Oh wow, okay, whoa, he's doing this mm. now. Mm. Like, rah, this is oh, this is mm. happening, happening mm. kind of thing. You stay like even like you still take the control out of the situation. Out of the situation yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to no, say? Like? like you do not even have to explain this. I, I feel like you're articulating it incredibly well, a hundred percent. Like a hundred percent. I think the problem with Tim Westwood is not the fact that these kids, these ladies were over, they were over the age of 16. I think fixating on that too much is- It's what he does. I look, I, people, people can, people, people can vilify for me. They can say what they want. I do not care about the ages. Yeah, I don't, I don't think anyone should. I honestly think there was an abuse of power here. Yeah. There was abuse of power. A lot of the women that were discussed, um, they were, they were trying to do their thing in their music. They thought this was somebody who fucked with- their culture and their scene. And bear in mind, from what I understand of music back in the day, it wasn't a thing where you could just upload your song to social media and, and the people can make the decision. Yeah. You needed these gate. These gatekeepers were truly gatekeepers. They were tastemakers. They were songs, t- were, songs were getting broken on radio. Right, really exactly. Yeah. And so it, it's kind of a thing where these people are like, no, he's like the only white face because that's what they needed in these spaces. The only white face who really fucks with our music. And he's been doing it for so long. He does fuck with our music. And all our... All our brothers and all our favorite male musicians, fu- oh, musicians, full stop, fuck with this guy. It's almost like a a blue tick before that had a thing. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So he's gonna be sensible. He's gonna be serious. Do you know what I mean? He's not. He's not gonna be fucked or whatever. He's not gonna. And even if there was, like you said, even if there was a desire to flirt or to or to whatever, the issue here is that what these women described was somebody who knew he had the power in the situation. Bro. And felt no type of way about exerting it over these people. And we're going to have to talk about <laughs> the fact that this was exclusively, felt like exclusively black women. There's we're going to have to talk about that in just a second. Well, it is exclusively black women because he's in a black area. He's in a black scene. He's attracted to black women. It's yes. always going to be black women. So, But one of the girls said something here yeah, that's proper stuck with me. And it's, and it's, and it, and it's mad, there yeah, Because she was saying that he's a guy for unattra- unattractive women. I felt so. I, 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 and like I said, yeah, but obviously I don't want to, I can't interpret that. I, I don't want to interpret her words wrongly, if that makes sense. So I was, in my mind, I'm thinking, how, I want to know how she means that. Does she mean that black women are seen as unattractive in society or does she think that she's deemed as unattractive herself personally and that's the kind of girls that he's going for? Because I keep, I need to say, like, if that is, if, if, it's, that, if it's the latter one, yeah, mm. that mindset is, that is sadistic, that is ridiculous. Re- Ridiculous. Well, that, for on whose part? Sorry, on from Westwoods, Westwoods that he's going for unattractive black female women because he's a millionaire. Yeah, he can and there's girls that like clout chasers, so he can get paintings if the, if that's what you want. Because if he, he's yeah. sixty, whatever. But if that's what if, if the girls are after that in that circles, he can get them. So he can get paintings. So if you're targeting that girls that are deemed unattractive by society, it's because this it's gonna almost like it's like at cost to society almost like no one don't care. It's like you can get away with your. With, with all the fucking that you're doing over there because yeah. no one don't care about them yeah. over there. If it was the big, pretty, shiny thing, noise is going to be made. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, so, so yeah, if that's if that's true. I don't I I don't know. Obviously, I'm not the... the I remember the lady because she had hoop earrings. I remember her saying it because it stuck with me as well. I think he, she's talking about the, the ongoing cultural conversation at that time, like where darker-skinned women or whatever were not seen as... Attractive, and she, so I think that's what she was articulating. She like, could have, but, but black yeah, women, black women always been beautiful, especially in the nineties and that as well. Like one hundred percent. But 
mugs, there was a very real hostile conversation around those times. So she I mean? could have been, but to say a blanket statement just to call all women unattractive seems like that wouldn't necessarily think, be it. But it could have been. That's why I said, yeah, I don't know, innit? We don't know. Yeah, yeah we, we, we don't know. I, I think she was just saying like, I don't, I actually don't, I, the thing is that I'm hesitant to put into her, her mouth words that I don't understand, mm-hmm. but but it was definitely like the way it stuck with you was the way that it stuck with me as well. And I felt like he, what, it, what she was saying, and this could be me putting my own narrative to it, is that this is an unprotected sector of society mm-hmm. and he he can come and do as he pleases mm-hmm. and he can come and do as he pleases because, because when I think about Westwood, yeah, I feel like if Westwood was just any 40 to 60, where, however old he was, a um, white man navigating these spaces, say he didn't have all the clout and that, I don't think he would have got away with it for as long as he has. Like, I mean, it was like, a, it was like, like I said, you were saying everything is alleged and all of that. But I mean, the way that social media erupted in, he was at my freshers. Yeah, like he, you know, he was, you know, he was doing too much. You, you touched me. He was, yeah, baby. Like all of that stuff. It was, it wasn't a secret that he had this, he had his playgrounds. He liked certain. Look, like- no, but he's look. It's it's because he's because look. He's been old forever in it. So that's an ongoing. <laughs> that's an ongoing thing within the scene that Eddie's around and he likes the young black girls and like that. Everybody, everybody knows that. Yeah, but they're always but- going to be young black. They're always going to be young girls because he's so old. Like, do you know what I'm trying to say? That so that's what everybody was. That's the reputation that he has. So I've known of that reputation, but I never had a problem of, with it. If, I didn't know it was abusive. If or- he wasn't popping, no. But here's my thing. Say say it wasn't Westwood. Say it was just a dude in this space. Who let's say something else, project manager. I don't know. Let's say just a dude in this oh, space. Oh, what you saying? Yeah, he wouldn't be. Um, he wouldn't be so protected. He wouldn't be so protected. We have to ask who's protecting him. No, but the people in position. People in. But who in, are the people in position of power? What other white people? No, he's in the position of power because he's popular, and so the other people around him they got invested interest. They got invested interests in in his in well-being. keeping in, in closing their eyes. In keep it in putting things away or whatever, like that's just no, what it is, isn't it? So, but, but I, here's my thing: I have no names to associate to what I'm led, what I'm suggesting, right? I have no names in my head, but somebody like Tim Westwood, yeah, moving in these spaces and it becoming like culturally normal, culturally normal to kind of, it's, I don't care if you're a 150 year old DJ, I don't mind that. Like, d- don't let age stop you, boo boo. Do what you like. Is the fact that that's not the part, is the fact that it was kind of a known thing that Westwood would be inappropriate. It's an, it was a known thing. Like, it was a known thing. Freshers, it was a known thing. And my thing is, like, what what I feel like happens a lot when black women complain about being mistreated is you should have known better. This attitude of you should know better. You didn't have to do this. You didn't have to do that. But you literally spent the first part of this conversation as explaining the power dynamics. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, and the things that like, Marks, I'm so sorry. If you didn't explain it and I said it, so many people wouldn't even hear it. Like, you yeah, I don't. Think, I think so many people wouldn't hear it. Like, it would be a because that was one of the conversations I saw online. Like, these weren't children; these were grown women. Like, you guys wanted a come up. You guys wanted, a, and I'm like, yo, you guys really move in a vacuum. Like, you don't, you don't acknowledge context. You don't acknowledge, and the reason why it's important to know, know context is because this is how these people navigate. But it's human nature. In the shadows, it's like, human nature, and you have to accept that people think and people feel like that because it's part of it's part and parcel of it. You do look and think. What the hell are you doing over there with with Tim Westwood? Like what, like what on earth? Like how did he even get to? What on earth are you doing over there with with Tim? Yeah. So this is and this is why people will say stuff like that and not and it sounds fucked up, but not to say like you bring it on yourself or anything like that. But they're, what they're trying to say is like this happened. There's a there's a reasoning for this. This happened mm. for a reason. And what was your reasoning to to to, to be with him? Because mm. look at him. What are you doing? Mm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So that's why they're going to say this kind of stuff. But, and, and I mean, there's there's a part of that. That's, there's a part of that that yeah okay. So, so finish your point and then I'll. Just so I was going to say there's a little part of that that's like, un, like it's understandable that people think like that or yeah. look like that because it's for real. It's like because it is like 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 what 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 are you, what are you doing? Yeah. I don't understand. Like he's there and he's saying with these these young black girls where uh, okay cool and you are like, onto him because he's winding up young black girls. These young 22, 23 year old black girls are are whining on him. Why? Yeah. Yeah. What, what are you, what are you no, doing? That's other stuff I saw like at Freshers as well. That's things I've seen. Like I've seen is here's the thing. It was here's the thing for me, yeah. There is when I went to Freshers and whatever, and I'll see Tim Westwood at one of them or whatever, it wasn't like Tim Westwood came in a black coat cloak and was grabbing women that didn't, you know what I mean? It was this celebrity, it was this element of celebrity. Yeah. And and even even when you're first year, there's even guys in third years that look forward to the first years because 
first years kind of see older years as it's an ongoing narrative. Did you go uni? No. Okay, it's like an ongoing like our like first girls, are, first year girls, because the power dynamics are very fucked, right? Mm. There's a level of accountability, one hundred percent. But I don't, I don't think people understand how powerful, how powerful the power dynamic, how, how powerful that plays a role in how people engage with one another. If you go, know I mean, mm. it. it well, people do, man. We pretend like they don't. They do. It's like yeah, guys. They know. It's like guys that target young girls. If that makes sense. Yes. It's like I know. Yeah, you could be as mature as you want. I know. I know for a fact. If I'm just going for nineteen year old gal, but I've 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 I've, I've been there too long, man. They ain't got yeah. no moves for me. Like they, it's manipulation. It's they haven't man, got any. They haven't it's got any moves for me because they have more power bars than you. Like, yeah, they, like, can... they think they might. They could, whatever they think they know and they think they control it. It's got nothing to do with it because I know. I know. I like, say this about... Um, I've, I, I know I've got the t-shirt, all the books, everything. I've got moves you ain't even seen yet. You get what I'm trying you to say? You haven't even seen. And, that's, that's, that's and that doesn't truth. have to be about a, abusive or forcefulness or nothing. It's all going to be consensual, but I'm in the position of power here yes. because I have the knowledge and, the and problem, I know what I'm doing. And the problem with position of power, yeah, is it's about how much a disparity there is. And then how it, you abuse the power. And how you abuse the power. Like, I, do you know how many guys I feel like have been molested by female pedophiles, like with older women, yeah, like, and they will say, I knew what I was doing. They will say with their entire chest, I knew what I was doing. Like, yeah, man, I, I moved to my teacher, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you lot don't even understand. Like, the arrogance to make you, for you to think at 14 years old, you had more brain juice than this 30-year-old woman. That is rooted in some next kind of bullshit. I'm telling you that for free. This was, like, I, I just feel like people don't understand how power dynamics really, really work and how impactful they are. And ultimately, I feel like with Tim Westwood, not just being older, it's being... Is the power he held in the music industry is a clout he held. Do you know what I mean? And also, I think it's the lot of the amount of people that let him do him without checking for it. There's this thing, yeah. Somebody put a tweet out. They said, the moment one white man celebrates Pounder Jam, yeah, we are all just open to like embracing them into our home. Like, as if we're just so happy to see a white person embrace our culture. I, I don't know if we do that that much now, but we have we do do that at certain points. And what that led to was the abuse and, and just really bad experiences for these women, like really bad experiences. Even if you want to say like legally it's not rape because there was a yes or there was a, a however you want to say it, whatever. And, and the, the conversation of consent didn't exist then. And these women wouldn't have been listened to. They would have been easily dismissed and, and all these other things. No matter what you want to say is that is not a situation you would want to be in. Mm. And that's not a situation you would want your because sometimes you have to talk to men in, in family. So that's not a situation you'd want your sister in or your brother. Do you know what I mean? You wouldn't want somebody in that situation. And I feel like that is just the bottom line. He did something that I don't think he would have done in the light. Do you know what I mean? It was if allegedly whatever, because we have to say that and all of that stuff. But I don't know, for me personally, that whole Tim Westwood thing kind of shows, I feel like the lack of sympathy there are for black women um, when they are in any situation like this. Like it's just immediately, it just feels like the only people that are ready to go to war are other black women. Um, I also think we need to acknowledge that Tim Westwood's antics doesn't happen in a vacuum. There are people that see stuff and have to choose to like create a narrative that allows them to not feel bad or guilty about it, you know? And I feel like the fact that people have been saying these kind of things for years, for absolute years, and it takes, it's like there's this really slow approach to actually doing anything is it is really scary you know what it's mad because obviously like people don't i don't like i don't really like always harping on about race but everything comes back to it whether we like it or not absolutely know? everything. and then you can't help not help but think that if absolutely. you presented this story to the world the exact same story and it was an old black man sexing that little white guy what what would be going on what would, what would be happening? I couldn't even think of. I was I was gonna like use some example names, but I don't even want to put people. Yeah, I, can't even, I, I was thinking a, of something. Yeah, I, can't yeah, even, like, I, can't I can't even think, think of something. anyone anyway. But I mean, the, the, but that's the, the outrage. The outrage would be would be ridiculous. And they might bring back lynching or something. And sometimes outrage doesn't even. Well, okay, yeah, but yeah, like sometimes outrage doesn't even need to be like. I don't mind if if we as a community are quick to defend first. Like, I don't think I've seen any other race that feels like they need all the facts before they do something like we do. Like, oh my gosh, like, yo, if, like... I think it's because we don't like feeling stupid. Oh, but 
listen, at the rate of that, we have so many young women and men that are going to be treated like shit because we love to take our time. Like, we love to take our fucking time. Don't get me wrong. Like, I hear what you're saying. There's nothing worse than going to defend somebody and realizing, oh, they, they took you for a dickhead because race doesn't mean that you're not going to lie and all of that stuff. Mm. But, guys, out of every other race that I see, every other, like, community that I see, they are so quick to defend their own and deal with the facts afterwards because... Because they don't want to even allow the room for for misconduct and that kind of abuse towards their people. And I'm not talking about rape. I'm talking about like, I don't know, being fired or racism. Just They're just quick to defend their own. White people are quick. White people are quick to defend their own. I would say that about many communities. I would say the only people that I see moving with vim, loud, aggressive vim in the black community are black women. If Whether it's for black men, whether it's for other black women, we will be loud and we will deal with everything <laughs> afterwards. Megan, we didn't, we didn't waste time. Like, Tory must be dealt with. And, and we'll wait for it because we just didn't want that culture because we realised in that situation that if it was Kylie... Yeah, it's mad, but if he's, if he, if he's innocent, your if, apologies better be loud. If, he, if, if he's innocent, if he's loud. innocent, if he's innocent, if he's innocent, yes, the apology will be loud. But I think the bottom line is that we set a culture of saying, yo, if, if you think you're going to get away with fucking with black women and not saying anything, there's going to be noise. I want to see how that pans out. Sorry to even just change the subject because then if she did like, are you not going to scold? Like, what's going to happen? There's going to be no repercussions for what I she think there'll be repercussions. I don't know. Not that. from, no. I think there'll from, be from, from, from black women. What are they going to do? No. I think, but, but, realistically, what can we do? See, exactly then. No, no, gave up. No, no, you no, gave no, up already. No, 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 no. no realistically, realistically, what can what we do? No, so she just gets no, the pass then. No, see, it's not, it's not I knew it. So I asked a question and you come up with a statement. I'm saying if if Megan, if it comes out and it says like Megan, um, did do something like she she lied entirely. Number one, I think a lot because I personally feel like with Megan, if we can just quickly say that there were a lot of black women that, by the way, are like Tory. They side with Tory. It's it's not. There's a lot of black women saying that doesn't sound right. There's a lot of black. I'm just saying in the moment where people reacted immediately, they were more annoyed. From what I saw, they were more annoyed with the idea that why doesn't it feel like stuff is happening? And if it was Kylie, something would happen. Oh, yeah, even cool. even if it's a quick. Handling of facts, something would happen. I don't think you lot understand. I feel like a lot of times when black women get angry, people get defensive rather than listen. Maybe because and people say it's because the way that we get angry. I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry. It's, it's anger. So like I don't know what you want. But when you say that whole thing of oh black women, is that even that narrative of like what are you guys gonna do? It's so it's so divisive. Do you, do you understand the point of why people were quick to defend Megan? Because in yesteryear, nobody would have defended the Megan. That, that was the point. It wasn't about getting at black men. It happened to be a black man who was being accused, but it became a... Oh, fuck. How are we going to heal? How we, oh, sorry. How are we, how are we, how are we going to fucking heal? Because the moment black women are angry, it feels like... It feels like every like, black men are saying we're angry at them. The person being accused is a black man. Like, you lot don't have to feel the attack. We're just saying, like, yo, like, all of us... And, and to be fair, if, we, if you watch Joe Budden back when he had these two other friends on it, Ma was very quick to be like... Um, Ma was very quick to defend Megan, and then after that, I don't know who spoke to him, but the day afterwards, he was like, "You know what? It's true. We never know what's we never know what's happening, and and all of that stuff." I just think that the visual of of black women complaining and people listening is important. Like, do you know how easy it would be to f- to um fuck up a black woman if you knew that she can make noise and no one's gonna listen, which has been the case for such a long time. Like, I don't know. I don't really even know why one can't be correct and the other one be correct. I I don't I don't get it. I don't know. Even that whole, what you just said there, yeah, oh, um, yeah, but if she's wrong, you lot are going to have to all apologize. It just set, it just shows your mindset. It shows your mindset is very black women versus black men in that, di- it's, it's not even, you're not seeing what it really was, which was, we can't let people think this is okay to do. Which is fine. And she has said this person did that. Which is fine. And it's she hard didn't. to envision that she was lying. But now, you know, now it feel, everything feels a lot grayer to everybody. We're just all going to sit down and wait on the outcome. But if she is lying, Megan is wrong for lying. Of course she's wrong, but that's what but I'm saying. But we wrong for defending a, a this black woman. This is why it's mad. It can't be so combative, innit? You're not wrong for defending But you were, the, you were the one that demonstrated a combative mindset. Because no, you the, were immediately like, oh, black women should feel, this is how it sounded to me, all black women should feel shame if Megan lied. Yes, we, yes. We, defend, we defended a woman that said somebody shot her. The person that shot her happened to be black. We defended the fact that when she was shot... Well, they're both black. Yes, but yes. He happened... Yo, listen. So, we did, so that's why people want the facts because he's just because she's a woman, her story is not more important than his. They're Tory, both black. If Tory Lane shot Megan, Megan Thee Stallion, yeah? I don't think... I feel like the how things have gone on, it seems like a black man versus black woman thing. But I think... I don't understand why we wouldn't all immediately be like a black woman has been shot. That's what we care about. 
The fact that it's happened to some people because he came out instantly and said it's not true. And and the, the problem. So with there's that, a black man being accused. So who? Why is your plight any more better than his? It's, that's what I'm trying to say. It shouldn't be so combative. But that everybody everybody's involved in this. But isn't I it? don't know. So, so because it's a black. Okay. All right. You're I, then. I guess we're seeing it the same way from two different. Well, I'm I'm a man in the room, and in all honesty, when it is I heard it, I actually thought he did shoot her because why would she lie? And I thought he couldn't have shot her because why on earth would he do that? He can't. I, like, but my uh, my immediate thing was he must have shot her. <laughs> do you understand? And that's just what, what she's kind of saying. I'm a man. You're a man. Mm. I'm thinking. He doesn't have to take one. Yeah. This guy shot this woman. It's... And you're like, why would he shoot this woman? Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking there's no, I, I just watched him go from quarantine radio. Yeah. His things. Every, the way he's in his career. The stuff that is, is. The way that his whole trajectory of his career is gone. Yeah. And then, yeah. You told me that he done that. But at, then, at, I, but at, at I also, party. It, was, it was after, no. it was after also, party and he was inebriated, right? And he's gone to party so many times and inebriated right. so many times. He's never shot anyone. He ain't even shot a man before. But he's, I'm supposed to believe he done this. I'm not saying he didn't. I'm just saying the way my brain works is there was so much going on. I'm saying he couldn't have done... Because I just don't... He doesn't present as crazy to me. And I just don't understand how he could be that crazy but my thing to is, do that. But my, th- my thing there is that and this this might sound crazy to you, but my thing is that factually we know Megan was shot. No, like yeah, factually but it doesn't we know mean it was him. a bullet. T- no, but I'm saying because girl lie. Oh, that's great, and that's true. That's true. W- women lie, men lie. Everybody so we, lies. We didn't know right from the beginning because she said that it was glass. Yeah, it was glass. Yeah. Okay. okay that's, but, there was. But when she said, again. but when she said there was glass, like the, then I had no. Re- I was like, oh, she said glass. When when she said she had been shot in the foot, I feel like that's a very alarming headline. I feel like. It should be, yo, why is this woman being shot in the foot? Why is she being shot in the foot? Instead, like, I feel like you lot feeling that Corey being, um, not Corey, Tori being uh, um, accused and black man, like, why? I don't know how to describe this. Why? I don't think you need to attach yourself. How do I describe myself? I don't know how to describe this. I don't think you guys need to attach yourself to this. Like, I feel like a woman being shot, even, okay, if I say vice versa, you lot won't agree, but I think a woman being shot and that being the factual information we, we have, why wasn't there just immediate like concern for that? Well, there was though. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I think there was. There I was don't know, loads of it. Because no, no man, you shouldn't be shooting a woman like that. There was bear of that online. There was bear of it. Not just from women, from men as well. Yeah, there was no, loads of it. Yes, and I said, I said, I said, said Ma as well. But I said, the, you lot's attachment to, you explained it anyway. You were like, the reason why we care that um, Tory's been accused is because the, it's, so, it's so regular for black men to be accused for something that they didn't do. I hear that. I do hear that, but I don't know. I just kind of feel like if Tory, like we've all said this, we said this in our last episode. I don't know if it came out, but ultimately, if we're all gonna wait and watch and see what happened, but I don't think there was a problem with us giving a fuck, like okay, caring. This is this is this is what this is what the general problem is. Yeah, none this of us know what's true. Obviously, something did happen. Yeah, we, we don't know what's true. We don't know who's in the wrong. So we don't know she got shot. Well, well, something happened to her. She got shot. We don't know who done it. Okay, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, we don't, we don't know who done it. Yeah, she's saying he done it. He's saying he didn't do it. We don't know. As it stands, we don't have all the information, so mm. we don't know. All we can do is guess. But as it stands right now, you're acting like what she's going through is more important or worse than what he's going through. And it's the same thing. And this is what the problem is. You're acting like her, her thing's more important at the moment. But it's not, because we don't know what's going on. My so original- my thing is, if it turns out that she was lying and he didn't do anything here, yeah, this energy that you've been giving him, I need it louder. You need, you need to appease it. You need to apologise almost. Like It's because... Why was apologize for caring a woman got that a woman got shot in the for foot for saying that his his her plight is more important than his before we even know remember we don't know it's all well, assumptions that we're dealing with at yes, the moment yes we're all dealing with assumptions but for me personally I don't think the way that this all started because because when I get emotional is let me just say this factually <laughs> <laughs> the way that this all started was that I think out of all other communities it feels like we as a community are slow. Like other communities will back and deal with things because, because it's important to show people that we don't play. It's important to show people that we care about our women, our care about our children, care about our... Do you know what I mean? When, when a, a white child goes missing, the police are quick to... Statistically, they're quicker to try and find a solution to that than when a black person... They, oh, even we say cunt. I'm just saying, I you know, feel like true. there's you, too you're much You're probably not wrong. Us. But let me if lie, it's let wrong, me we can't lie. enable that behavior. Yeah, if it's lies. Oh my, if I, it's lies. Of course we can't believe so that. And this is what I'm I, saying. All I said to you is what do you want us to do? Because I feel like what that what would happen when um if if um it turns out that Tori is innocent, what's gonna happen is that it's going to become a really spiteful conversation between black men and black. Well, you allowed me. You, the I part- honestly, I hate I proper hate cancel culture, and I can't believe that I'm gonna say this year, but I think it's only fair because it's the day and age that we live in. Yeah. 
If she's lying, if she lied, it's cancel her. And what does that look like to you? The same way it looks like for everybody don't, else. Don't, don't mess up her music, money, don't. mess up her everything, her if, livelihood, if mess Meg, up her if money. Megan, if Megan, the same way it goes for everybody else. That's if, what she... If I think Meg, that's fair. If Meg the Stallion... No? If Meg the Stallion lied... Brent, is that fair? What, I'm talking... She, let, me, let me let Koi finish If Meg the Stallion it. lied, I promise you everybody will deal with her. Like, everybody will deal with her. Like, everybody. Everybody will deal with her. But, the way that and they, they will cancel her. Whatever they've done with R. Kelly, they will do with her. You reckon? People still listen to R. Kelly. So I'm trying to say everyone's going to do what feels right to them. People, everyone's going to do what feels right to them. Some okay. people will be like, fuck me. People will write. This is what I think will happen. If, if Megan is lying, this is what I think would happen. People will, um, some people will stop listening to her music. People will write this bars talking about Megan. She would become that new bar about women that lie. She would become the face of that. I don't know what's going to happen to her music career. I don't think it will do well. Do you know what I mean? Because I don't think it will do well. It won't do a 6-9, but it, I, I don't think it will do well. Um, and I think there will be consequences. There's no way that she's going to get through. This is what I'm thinking. Why is everyone so concerned with what would happen if she lies? If she lies, she's done out here. Like, she's done out here. It might not be... She's, she might not be homeless on the streets, but she's not going to be the beloved Megan that we know because she literally lied. And, and it wouldn't just be the lie. It will be the context. Do you know what I mean? Everybody will have to come out and talk. Her best friend, all the people that were in the car will have to come out and talk. It, this one's weird because as I, even as you're talking, yeah, because I honestly, like I said, I said it. I'm looking at the Tory and I'm thinking he couldn't have done that, yeah. Yeah. But when we're talking about this now and I'm thinking about Megan, I'm thinking like, why would she? She lie? can't be lying, man. Like, why would she like? If anything, yeah, like, she you know, can't you, be lying. you know when things are so mad, you're just like, it must be a misunderstanding. Like you, you're, they, I, think they got, side, I think they got, I think they got to agree to disagree. Just, in just, it. Like, oh, because <laughs> if it was a lie, they both. Just, I don't, because I don't know why Tory would be running like um lockdown. He was, he could control lockdown. No, and, you got. But anyway, he was drunk. We've got to understand, yeah. Do we, we're looking this play out every time, yeah. One of them's crazy. Yes. One, no, <laughs> one of no, no. Literally, it's it's a it's a it's a A or B. There's no yeah, in between one, option. One, one of them is somebody absolutely lied. crazy. There was two other people in that car. There's I don't care who their PR team is. I don't care who their legal team is. One of someone's gonna have to take responsibility for this. One of them's crazy. Someone's gonna have to take responsibility. Somebody is lying. That's uh, uh, this is my thing. Can I just say this just to wrap it up? Because I know we have to go. This was meant to be shorter, yeah. I don't think you understand. Like the sh- getting shot, you know, we have celebrities, we have, you know, Whitney and Bobby, we have I can like, we've had crazy things happen, right? The I think the the reason why this felt particularly poignant is because Kylie Jenner's name was thrown into the mix, right? Margs, please, if Kylie got shot in the foot in that car. Yeah, he'd be in prison now. Some, in fact, even if they didn't know he was guilty, the process would look more like they gave a fuck. And that's what I think black men see. Anytime black women get angry, it feels like black men get offended. But I don't think you'll understand what we're angry about. Maybe we're not articulating. We're articulating the fact that people were slow to do something when a black woman got shot. When she now said it was Tory, then it gave even more of a divide. And I don't understand why. Wrong is wrong, right? If somebody says that they've been <sighs> shot... By somebody in the car. I just, and you said, yeah, we all kind of did. We, you, you're saying everybody cared. It was when, but her accusing a black man shouldn't, shouldn't have created everything that it created between us. Like, it, it shouldn't be a Tory versus Megan. And by the way, there's a lot of women that think Tory is telling the truth. There's a lot of uh, men that think Megan is telling the truth. This isn't a gender divide. So why does it feel like a gender divide conversation? That's what I'm trying to say. Like, when you just said that whole thing of, if she's lying, I want to see the same. And it's so revealing of your mindset. It's so revealing of your mindset. I'm I not think saying there's nothing wrong with that mindset. Yeah, no, I'm cool. I'm revealing. I think that's fine. You said you've have been you loud. You didn't say you've have been you didn't really say, loud. Like, I could be wrong, but you didn't say, "Oh, everybody needs to come." I feel like you you were targeting. You're saying all women need to come and make the same noise that they were making before, like that. You know, men and women have defended either side of the argument. That this idea that oh, women are. I don't know. I don't know how to articulate, Margs, but when you when you were just talking then and you said women have to come out and they need to defend. If Megan is wrong, Megan will be dealt with as wrong. If everybody is waiting, everybody's literally waiting and thinking this story is too crazy. Somebody's know, lying. I mean, it can sound how it sounds and it can feel how it feels, but I mean, I, I stand if by Meg- it. Everybody that has been vilifying homie and going, if yep. it is not true, you have to say sorry. I want to hear it. No, I want to hear it loud. Yeah, you have to say sorry. And if, to be, and I want repercussions. Meg, what repercussions? What would you? I want? wanted to get cancelled. Okay, I thought you meant repercussions for the people that believed. Anyway, like people believe. Oh no no, believe. no 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 no. Okay, no, no, no. so that's where we've been going wrong then. Because I thought you wanted like people that 
um, if, if it comes out that want to get flogged no yeah I was like what do you want like that's what I said what do you want and immediately you went into like I, I have a dream speech I'm like yo what do you want these people to do oh, no, I don't, they sympathise with Megan because the story was so crazy right you lot are sympathising some people are sympathising with Tori because they can relate to being accused of something that they didn't do and they don't understand how Tori can be in that situation we're all sure that one of us is wrong so we're all just sitting down and listening now innit but if, if it turns out that Tori is telling the truth Cause that's the that's the, even the vibe that's being put out. You know, people are still doing music with him. If it turns out that Tori, because we're thinking, why are people? Why does it feel like the industry knows something that's different to what we know? I've heard people say that from people in industry circles that they say that there's a thing in the industry that's like everybody knows that's not true. That's like that's a thing that gets said when you talk to people about anything. They be like, oh, like everybody knows that's not true. Yeah. And just to, to point, um, so I've been obviously in the mix with. Uh, quite a lot of this conversation back and forth between male and female, females or men and women over the course of this particular thing transpiring, right? So I've heard this divide in which as you speak of, I've seen it. What what we've also seen online is when this came out, a lot of um, black women were again reiterating this particular notion that black men don't protect us and now they're killing us. So this was seen, and it was very, very evident, very visible mm. at the time. Again, rightfully so. And I guess Marks, um, from his point of view, I'm not speaking for Marks, but again, uh, I've seen this particular conversation playing out with male uh, groups talking here, is they are engaging with this content. They are seeing these visible, how hyper-visible uh, tweets or commentary, and in their head, they're thinking, all right, if you were so hyper visible, then saying black men this, that, and next, when or if. if, thank you very much for the correction, if it comes out that she was lying, I could understand why Margs would then take that whole scale approach and say, hey, you black women need to do this. Right, yeah. let's, then let's cut because to the, he sorry. saw that same thing yeah. on the other side. Can I, can I say something? But then let's cut, let's cut to the chase then. Do you feel like black men do enough to defend and protect black women? Yes or no? And then go into your long debate, like long day, like to your got explanation about it. But do you genuinely feel like if there was a, do you genuinely feel like black men are defend black women? I just, I don't think statements like that are fair. All black men, we don't even all know each other. I think we all get that pet. We can't, you can't just tar us all with the same brush. So okay. one black man does something and then all of us do it. One no, black man not, thinks that all of us I'm, are killing each other. But no, but men are men. This no, what I'm telling you, look, there's okay. one, no, let me just finish quickly because okay. there's there's good men out there. There's of loads of, there's good men. and there's loads of black men out there that protect black women. So how do you answer that question? Do you, you, we can't represent, and, and we can't speak for all of them. Okay, cool. So I'll say, so I'll say yes then. Yes, okay, they do. Cool. Because there's loads of black men out there that protect black women. So then what now? So then, so why does it, and me personally, I have a fantastic stepfather. I have a great dad. Um, and I have like three male friends that I know got me any day of the week. hundred percent. I experienced that. What I'm trying to say is, why does it feel like, yeah, there's more stories of moments where black women are not defended and protected. Like this doesn't, like the things, this is going to be argumentative because of the fact there's so much passion behind it. So that's where it is. I don't have a problem with you, Mums. When I'm saying this, I'm just talking because this is emotional, that's right? What I'm trying to say to you is there feels, there seems, is this sentiment just social media created then? Because I don't. It is social media because social media people people got like everybody likes bad stuff. When something's bad, okay. it goes viral. So more. you're saying so you hear whole... the negatives, the positives you don't hear, the success stories you don't hear. It's the negatives that get pushed everywhere. Okay, so, you think so you're saying this everything's whole negative. Sentiment. But so what you're... about the real stuff? All right, so you're saying this whole sentiment, yeah, of um, black men don't defend black women is something that's curated completely on social media. Well, all the black women that's out there that's being def- well, five. You just you just ruled off like five, six black men that that, yeah. that protect women. So you know it's true, but you're still giving the sentiment that, that it don't happen. Because you're playing into it, that, the, the social media stuff. But in real life, in your real life, yes. you know plenty of black men that look after black women. Yes. And you're still prepared to come out in public and say and that it's not true. So this is my, this is my well, point. I'm asking you a question. What you're doing, I'm asking you a question. And what you're doing, you're telling me what I mean. I'm asking you a question. What I said is, do you feel like black men defend black women? The reason why I said that is because I feel like I've seen so many other examples in other spaces. In other spaces, it feels like the white, the women in those spaces. So let me say like, I'm just saying Asian or white women. It feels like, obviously the fuckery happens within themselves, but it feels like a black man 
couldn't do something to them without there being like a clear immediate outrage. That's what I'm saying. And I'm yeah, saying, why and that's doesn't true. it feel that's, that's that way? True. But, but let because me of land. our roles but, in let society. Me, let me land because you got that deep voice and all of that. So let me land. Why, why does it feel like that does, that isn't what I see when, when, why does it feel like I see more black women being violated and the conversation isn't an immediate defense? It, it feels more like a, like a, ooh, did she do something? It feels like the onus has to be on her. She's not allowed to be a victim or be in the wrong. I, I, I was honest with you. I didn't come and try and say that I don't know black men that can, are good I, to me. I, I do know black men that are good to me, can but I, it doesn't this seem like, is, am I special? I don't know. A, it's, it's, when it's, I say special, you know what I mean. It's, like, it's, it's a trick. Is it uncommon? It, it's a trick, yeah. And it's, it's a trick. And that's why and it's turned black people against each other. And then it turns women, black women and black men against each other. And then we think it's about us. And it's not. Because it's a trick. It's a bigger role in society. Uh, them white women... Then white women and Asian women ain't more protected. Black men are more vilified. So you can't go and do nothing to them. They're gonna, because we're we're seen that like, they're on us. We can't do yeah. nothing. They don't care about us. They don't can't do nothing. And black and the black women ain't protected because, again, because they don't care. It's because no one cares. You get what I'm trying to say? So, like, so because of where we are in society, and then all these things happen, and then we think it's about us, and it's black this and black that. Like you're mm. saying, like a black man can't go and do nothing nowhere. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. And it's why, why do you think you can get away with doing it to a black woman? Because they don't care about black people. Like, I don't so expect, but I don't expect these other people to care about me. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't expect I, the I white man you. walking down the road to care about me. I don't but care. These I don't things are in the a Asian bubble. To... These things are in bubbles. Because I'm like, again, in your real life, you will off, you will off five names for me easy. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure loads of people can do that. So then, so then what is the problem know. then? So is it real? Is it real life then? So are, are you really not protected? Or does it just feel it's it's society? It's not black men that's not doing it. It's society. It's the way it's our position in but, life. Okay, well, okay. And then I think what happens is the ambiguity of the title society. Who are you saying? Are you saying that this is something that, or, or, like, who is who do you think I is think responsible most, for I the think realization? All, I think all our problems are due to systematic racism. Okay, white people. Yes, the beast. Okay. Well, it seems like um, we have solved <laughs> <laughs> some big issues on the day after. Um, I think all the topics we talk about, they're topics that when it comes to, and we'll jump, we'll jump into the next thing, the, the funnest segment of the show. But I think all these topics that we talk about um, are ones that we can't get anywhere with on social media because social media isn't where people listen, it's where people talk. Yeah. And the, the day after, we're trying to have a conversation. Do you know what I mean? For me personally, I wasn't going to come here and try and push a point and pretend like I don't have black men that I feel like defend me just to make a point, just to just to win this argument. I wasn't going to do that. Do you know what I mean? But I do feel like there feels, to, there feels like to me, it feels like there is a gap. It feels like when I say stuff, I know, like when I say something, if I come out, I'm pretty sure black women have me. Do you know what I mean? I don't know why I don't feel that when it comes to, to black men. And when I talk about my father, my, 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 my three friends and, and my stepdad and all of that, when I talk about that, that's cool. But there's like a familiar bond. I just feel like societally, when I, if I go out there, something happens to me. If I don't know, I just can imagine black women doing something about it. And I don't know why I, I I feel hesitant to bet that black men would have the same actions. Especially because I think you lot are just not even cultured to be outgoing with your with your messaging. I don't know. It feels like you guys change things within yourself, but I don't know if you guys talk to one another. I don't know if you guys... Um, I don't know, because like, outwardly these things get said, but in the real world, in, yeah. in communities, I don't, I don't see it. And that's why I think, like I said, because I don't, that's why I don't, I don't... I don't what do you mean? Look, what do you see? Sorry, I just want to be clear. Like the like like you're saying like you feel like you could go out there in the world and anything happens to you and you know like black women have got you but you just don't feel like black men have got you and stuff like that and I just feel like in yeah. in the I real, feel like, okay, can I, can in I the real like, world in communities like I just don't I don't see that I like think, all the this, everything is online where all the things is like, yeah but that's what, I'm, but, that. but that's what I'm saying society listen if something if something happened to me I kind of envision that black women that don't know me. Yeah, will be even... active to do something about. I'm, I'm, yes, the boys that know me have got me. That's amazing. I'm, I'm blessed. I'm great. But not everybody has it. I'm just saying, like the culture of black women is such that I just feel like if something happened, they would be, they would, they would be so proactive, so quick to like see me in a good light in a world that doesn't. Do you know what I mean? Like if a young boy, a young black boy goes missing, yeah. Do you see the pictures that they even use? It's like there's this undertone message and always going around that we are more responsible. I don't know, like we should be judged more harshly than everybody else. But I feel like if um if something happened to me, I don't know if I can just envision, I don't know. I don't know. This I just don't know if I just I know I could bet on black women that don't know me to do something. I don't know if I can do that with other people. And I just feel like that's sad. And I feel like that's why other races and other people feel like they can do fuckeries with black women. Because I don't know if there's as much vim to do something. Like 
even if you don't know her, I, I trust black men will, will do the most for women that they know. I don't know if they'll do enough for women that they don't. And society isn't your family. Society is, do you know what I mean? I don't, that's what I'm trying to say. I don't know if that landed, if that made sense, but that's what I'm trying to say. And I feel like that's a big problem. And you're right. There's probably other people that are playing into this media thing, systematic racism. But if we know that, then we can't just sit in it. That's true. We've got to do something about it. Like, this is so interesting. Um, question, Marks. For as long as you've been alive and in a company of black women, have you heard this particular trope that Koi has been um, saying about black men not protecting black women enough? I've think, I think it's something that's developed over the last few years. Like with social media and stuff, it's something that's coming up. It's louder and louder. So you're seeing it more because we are connected more via social media, yes? Yeah, maybe, yeah. All right, okay. When that group happened um, just the other day, you showed your distaste for it, right? Yeah. And in that room, you you, you saw misogyny, one, right? As in black women getting um, insulted, dragged left, right, and center, yes? Yeah. Now, I do believe if you ask a, a different question, if you, you, if it is you come at him differently, as opposed to just holistically just saying, do black men protect black women? He's going to be very defensive because yeah. he feels you're talking directly at him. But if you walk him through examples where he is aware and he's even uh, pro- protested against this particular thing, he will receive it a bit more. All right, okay, I see what you're saying. But then the, the two examples that I can say are the ones that we've discussed on the show. Like with the Tim Westwood one, I feel like, his ability to access these women and he's a, like, listen, we have a documentary where seven women spoke, but I know there must have been women that spoke before this that would have been dismissed. Do you know what I mean? There was a, and the women, because this is in black spaces, they probably would have said this to an, a black person, right? And the, the, the immediately, it just, it just feels like, obviously, it's hard to talk on something that I, I didn't see or I don't know who these women were, but it obviously was ignored because it's only now that these things are being... Um, certifiedly put out there. Do you know what I mean? But even even with the, the Twitter spaces, bro, that was that was a space where that was a space of people that really should know better. These weren't people that lived in a cave somewhere. These are people that live in and amongst black women. And and our even our desire to even kind of reduce it to a joke or just oh they were just banned. That's what I'm saying. It's like it's what what, what do you mean the approach? I, I'm not shouting. <laughs> I'm not trying Because you don't care so much And also I feel like Also the fact that Don't get me wrong I get that when you're having A conversation with somebody It has to feel like a conversation But sometimes I feel like Men sometimes They care about How things are being said More than what is being said And and that that has been as an, That has been used As an excuse Both of us It's not an excuse Language, both is, both is, language both is important Both of us do that Language is, language is very important Language is very I, very is important it, Okay But is it more important than what is being discussed? Yes, because when because when you're dealing with stuff, you, you have to deal with it so, properly. Because someone out from the outside looking in needs the right information. If if it's going to be judged, or it's going to be thing, or people's going to pass so it, it, opinions on it. Grace. They need the right information. So you can't force feed misinformation to someone. And then how is it misinformation? Because if you're saying something wrong, it's wrong. I'm not talking about saying something wrong. I'm saying you lot are talking. That's not what no, I'm, I'm saying. No, I'm talking about not saying how, wrong. I mean how, the way you're saying. It. If you're saying something, saying something, yeah, exactly. How yeah, so I'm saying if you're saying it wrong, how do you expect somebody who feels downtrodden and ignored and like don't get me wrong for not, if, if you're a woman that has been downtrodden ignored abused and you're still able to articulate yourself in a way that makes the person you're talking to feel then you are amazing but i feel like let's have a bit of grace this this person's yeah, talking from a place we of still have to keep the integrity hurt. of our of our conversation like you can't be saying stuff that's not true i'm not talking about lying i'm talking I'm not, about it's not necessarily lying no but okay point. take lawyer lying out of it i'm talking about the fact that sometimes when it's said it's said very abruptly it might be said like loud it might be said in like in just bare different ways that don't make it fun to speak to that person but i feel like sometimes this is a conversation that's been re- i always say, to say that I, we're making no progress because of i always say said, i always say knowledge is power i believe it's important when you give people knowledge you can take or you can decipher it so when we're having an argument if you say stuff here yeah, that's not true i can't allow that to be for someone else to receive in their brain because then the decisions that they make moving forward I'm are going to be wrong about lying i'm is not that saying what, not that... lies maybe like it's not even if the way you word something because you could put a word in a different place and make it sound something it's not necessarily lying but the language you use the way you deliver information is important with the things that you say but how can you but do you understand that instead of okay this okay two situations let's let's do it the way you're saying and let's do it the way that i'm talking about right somebody who feels fucking not heard tired exhausted downtrodden been through this a million times and yes men can feel like this way but i'm talking about specifically about black women yeah and they're articulating their experience to you 
how like do you not think that there's a likelihood that they're gonna do that with tons of emotion? They're gonna yeah. do that with t- and even men, like even men as well. If they've gone through enough shit, when they're talking about it, they're gonna be angry, they might cry, they might not finish their sentences. When I get emotional, it's probably the time when I'm the least coherent because it's hard for me to express. It's it's a skill, like it's a it's a skill to be able to express yourself incredibly well when you're quite emotional. Cool. And what we're talking about is emotional stuff. You're saying, I hear that. If what it feels like you're saying is I hear that, but it's really important that you say it in this particular way for me. But you know what I'm saying. But like, you know what I'm trying to articulate to you. You know it because you're, you're able to dismiss. You're, you know that I'm talking about this pain and this mistreatment. But instead, it's like what we're prioritizing is the way in which I say it. And I feel like... It's, I, not, it's not because, like I said, the way I receive information is going to be important. So even with all that stuff that happened the other day when the McCoy's made the group, yeah. if you... Like, truth and stuff is important. So you you can get angry and and get upset and then when you're talking it's emotional then you say what you're saying yeah so then you're gonna say oh yeah these men made up a group to go and diss black women for me that is important because is that really what they done I'm not talking about what they done while they was in the group if that's if that's what happened while they was in the group then cool we can't argue that I need to know is the point of their the point of that group was it purposely to be dissing black women because if it wasn't you can't say that because what you're it's, it's not true and then. Like, this is what, that's, and that's just what I believe when I'm talking about language. You know what I'm trying to say? I'm not telling you that didn't happen, but you're going to tell me something. The way I'm going to receive it, you're going to tell me something. So now I'm going to vilify these people because I'm going to think that these idiots sat around together and goes, oh, let's make a group and cuss black people. And then I think differently of you. But if you didn't do that, I sh- you shouldn't give me the, rec- the information like that okay. because I'm going to think something that's not true. Okay, so what it sounds like to me is what you're saying is that when we're saying that, so when we're saying it, so let's say we said that, whatever, let's say we said that the guy started a group to dis black women. You're saying factually that's not true. They started a group and then it turned out that black women started getting dissed. That for you is an important distinction. Yeah. Okay. Uh, again, I'm a male in the room. And again, I see that as semantics. I, I see Big that man. as, uh, again, uh, but this is the beauty of this bloody platform. Is what I'm saying. This is, this it's is, like you don't even want to hear it. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is that he, he is saying what he's saying. Yeah, I, hear I, I am saying what I'm saying, and you're saying what you're saying. People like this exist in society, yeah. and it's important that all of these particular thoughts coexist. Coexist, even though I disagree with Marx's mm, take on this, because after you've quote changed the language and quote unquote given him facts, we still have to deal with the actual problem. Yeah, that's cool, and that's but why that's, that I can't change that. And I'm prepared and to do it. One hundred percent. And that's why I would quickly just give him what he needs because when I'm not dying on this particular argument because I'm getting my point off. So if this is what he needs to, for me to move on, I will give him what he needs and then I'll go on to the main point. But, uh, and, and what you're saying logically makes so much beautiful sense. But I'm saying when you're dealing with human beings who have experienced something, you, it's, good, it's, it's what you're asking for. It's, it may sound easy to you. It, it could be hard. It sounds like, I think it's hard in practice. I think, I think if I came into, you to, like say, say I experienced something really traumatic and horrible and I'm meant to be explaining it to you, yeah? I don't know how I'm going to do that. Shout out to everybody who can. But I think there's a lot to ask that everybody is able to explain it in a way that makes you feel... Um, because my my thing is that if they was if they suddenly started crying inconsolably and they can't speak, I understand that. Do you know what I mean? It's like okay, type it up or get someone else to say. I do you know what I mean? I'm trying to say I understand if there's no words, but my thing it feels like you guys not when I say you guys, you know what I mean. Anyway, um, it feels like sometimes we do semantics and we do re- um respectability politics and we do all these other things other than dealing with the fact that something really fucked up has happened. It's like. And then in that situation, I have to ask myself, are you prioritizing your how you feel in this conversation? Because there's going to be times where it's important how men feel. And there's going to be times when it's important how women feel. But it feels like we're both on a who's winning. Do you know what I mean? And I feel like who started that who's winning conversation, it feels it doesn't feel like it came from men. Because I, I, obviously I'm a woman and I know tons of women. But I just know growing up, it felt like women were all about about you, like, I don't know, it felt like we cared. It was like part of being a black woman was defending black men. It was something that was a proud part of our arsenal. I feel I know, like- Now you just want to tear us down. Let's move on to the end of the next section. Because I feel like, <laughs> we, can move, we can move to the end section right after this. I feel like, as annoying as that sounds, yeah, I think a lot of women put their armor down because they, they got tired. It's like, we're defending you, but I don't know if I'm getting that same energy back. And it, like in any friendship, if you feel like you're giving more energy and you're not getting it back, you're gonna, it's just that that's a, 
problem. Like we can't do that. As Let's just people. go back to the mid nineties, man. Life was good, man. If it you was, go back, I don't know go back, listen good, to R and B. I don't go, know if it was good. I think we always like what we don't know. Go listen to the music in the mid nineties, and you just wanted to cater to men and just hold us down, oh, and, yeah, and gosh. put up with stuff. And then in the put mid, up with stuff, yeah. and then in the mid two thousands, it just changed. We, we wanted it. Just, we wanted love back. Oh fuck! How terrible of women. In the, in the mid two thousands, it just changed, and they started talking about boy, if you oh, can't pay gosh. my bills. You can't even do nothing for me. Yes, I was because, like, when yeah. did this? When did the uh, landscape change? Like, I don't know. I, I I was walking when I was walking here today. I was thinking, yeah, it does feel like it was just a bunch. Like men were not great leaders at one point. Because if you had it patterned, if you had women loving you, and you, how can you not sustain that? What was the thing that you weren't doing for women to still feel that way? Why are we not still singing those songs? But it's like you have no onus on that. It's like women just changed. Nigga, nothing happens without a, a, a force or some sort of causing. Do you know what I mean? Some sort of cause. Like if you if we, if you were singing all these songs, women loved me. Women want to cater to me. Women want to cook for me. If you lot had it pattern like that, which I do think at one point in the earlier generation it was like that. Women valued themselves on taking care of their man. What did you do to fuck that up? Ask yourself that because women don't just wake up and change. What did you stop doing? What did you start doing? Maybe at one point women were doing that because they felt like they could earn your love and earn your respect, but the respect and love didn't come. So they were just like, fuck it, city girls. I don't know. Like, but you don't need to ask yourself, why did you have it patterned? And it's not no, still patterned. I think, to women just, I think women just fancy the change. All right, guys, it's time for us to end the show. <laughs> um, I, Wait, will... I want to ask one question. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't um, know you were participating. Sorry, yes, big man. <laughs> Sorry, hello. Um, you see, when you say. Oh... Can you introduce yourself, please? <laughs> All right, this is E Man. Uh, you know, I'm usually in the background as a producer and whatnot. But yeah, I just wanted to ask a quick question. Okay, let's go. You see, when you say black women are not being protected by black men. Yeah. I just wanted to basically. Um... And that was a question, by the way. That wasn't. Okay, cool. But, but yeah. you kind of feel that sentiment too. I can understand that sentiment for sure. Cool. Absolutely. I just wanted to basically ask if you can be more specific, right? Okay. Do you feel like black men are not protecting black women within the community or in the outside world? Um, I think that's a really good distinction. I, I personally think that I said at one point that I know five black men just off the top of my head that I feel okay. like have got me, right? Uh-huh. What I think is there's a culture I feel like that exists of women that I don't know getting me. That's what makes culture. It's not It's not your blood ties. Like my the, the people that are part of culture in me are not my cousins or friends. And I feel like a lot of other races are actually bound together by how much they dislike other races, if I'm being honest, right? And I feel like when it comes to black people it feels like a black woman from across the way across the planet that I don't even know if she sees me just has this way of humanizing me and giving a fuck about what I'm going through and I don't know if I feel like black men reserve that maybe just for the women they know and that's why men will be like no I'm amazing I'm, I'm really there for the black women but it's like where's the culture of just being for black like it feels like you're there for um the women you know but I feel like the difference with black women is that black women will be there for black people, like whether they know them or not. And it feels like that's the glue that's holding the culture together. It, culture is a gathering of people with a shared something. I feel like black women have that in spades. I, I, I don't think they need to know your name or know you. I think they have that in spades, right? You have some outliners and devil advocates. Cool. That's just life, isn't it? But I feel like that exists less within black men. Don't get me wrong. I know black men who go woke, but I just feel like overall, it's not enough. It feels like it's not enough because when there's these conversations of of black women going through crazy shit, I don't know if I and and maybe you lot style is just not being loud, but I think like you know you, you know how you said we need communication that we can understand. I think we need visible actions that we can see. Maybe in you lot's private lives you feel like you're doing it, but if it's if we're not seeing it, it's hard for us to clap for it or or feel like it's there. If you if you get what I mean, I hope that makes sense. Yeah, this might not be the best analogy, yeah, but. Yeah. Say um, this whole thing that was going on with Westwood, right? Yeah. There was a black director in the BBC mm-hmm. who found out about this information. Yeah. Do you think he's more likely to do something about Tim Westwood's behavior than a white man would? Or do you think it would be the other way around? I, th- I think there's a greater chance that he would do something. Okay. Or do you think a white... I, 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 don't, I don't really... I don't know. I actually don't know... The white guy could do it just because it brings views. The black man could do it because... Do you know what I mean? No, I, think they I might mean be dealing with it internally. So, like, okay. say say the public didn't even hear about the mm-hmm. situation. Do you feel like, like a black man would do something more or a white man would do something more? I think... In, in a similar way to... Say you was arguing with a white guy down the street. Mm-hmm. Man your business. Mm-hmm. The white man's getting violent. Or is about to get violent. Mm-hmm. And there's black people across the, you know, across the street. Mm-hmm. 
do you feel like the black man, black people, be black men, mm. would be more likely to be like, you know what, that's just a domestic, let me mind my business? Or do you think... No, today I feel like a black man would intervene, but I wouldn't be surprised if, a, if like, a white guy didn't fit, intervened as well, you know? No, just no, for, put, put it this way. So say you're arguing a white guy, yeah? Yeah. That's one scenario. But then you're arguing with a black guy. Mm-hmm. But the people, the passers-by are black men, two black men, for example. Mm-hmm. Do you, in what situation do you think the black men would do something or not do something? If that makes sense. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, can I ask what I think? Yeah. I think if it's if it's if I walk past and I see a black man and a black woman like just arguing, mm-hmm. then I'll probably just assume that there's some kind of thing. If it's not physical, you would leave it. If mm-hmm. I see a like a white guy getting aggressive on a black woman, mm-hmm. you're gonna look and see, well, what's going on here? Mm-hmm. So you got you'll be more inclined to do something. That's in that's that what I think too, and and I know it's not necessarily the best analogy to kind of sum up like everything that goes on with our interactions as the black community with the outside world. Mm. But in my mind, I don't see how. Obviously, this may make me sound some type of toxic or whatever. But a real black man is mm. going to see a white man doing something to a, a black woman mm. and just walk by or mind his business because we care. I'm not even like you see me. I, I, you look, look, you know me. I'm a weirdo. Yeah. I'm even like you know like there's nannies. There's people, there's nannies and work and stuff like that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Even if I see people like white people or Chinese people alone with a little black baby, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll say, whose baby is this? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm trying yeah, to say? Yeah. I'm asking, I need to know if you're working on yeah. Who, Whose baby is this? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, that, I'm like that. You know what I'm yeah. trying to say? So but, we, we care. Can I, can I say something? Mugs, the reason why we, we why we're cool and the reason why, like, it's, it's hard when you're having conversations mm-hmm. with the sane ones. Yeah. But like, what that room shows. Oh, you call me sane? I love that. It's occasionally. I love that for when me. The, when the moon is up, you know what I mean? When the stars are aligned and that, and the Scorpios are chatting with the Virgos and that, yeah. But I feel like, what, why is hard? Because these conversations, when you have these conversations with sane men, it's going to mm-hmm. make it look like the black woman is overreacting. Yeah. And what is, uh, there's a lot of shape-shifting. There's a lot of, you mm. know, come on, we care when people, when yeah. people are in the room, when people are looking at you, you're going to act a certain way. It's just a natural self-preservation mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. But what rooms like that did, yeah, it shows that okay. there is a sub level of even the world behaved guy that okay. is on absolute tarmac madness. I don't even yeah, know what's the word. But that's but... not just have to worry about overreacting, man. Get your shit off. Because the fact that you feel like that, yeah, is important because yes. it shows how you feel. And mm-hmm. the fact that you feel like that should be proof just through law of averages that other people feel like that. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, so it's important. It's good to have the it's, conversation. It's really, there. Don't worry I, about it. I feel like sometimes the good, the good black men overestimate how many of you there are. That's mm. what I think is hard. Like, like, I I'm fit. so tired. Like mm-hmm. My voice is, is going a lot more softer, but I promise I'm still, is, uh, still angry, yeah? <laughs> like, I feel like you lot stay overestimating how many, like, how many of you there are or how many of you you're around. Mm-hmm. Like, there are, to be a strong black man is not easy. Mm. Like, so I'm, I don't understand why you lot don't understand that a lot of men do not qualify. Not think, because there's not, there's also a lot of shit white men and a lot yeah. of shit Asian men, of course, but they, I don't, Require them to show up for me. So mm-hmm. if they don't show up for me, it doesn't do anything. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, I keep yeah. knocking things around. But like, yeah, I'm not saying that there's not. A lo- I named five, but do you know what, guys? What I didn't name was all the black men that have been have have touched me. And have mm. have been bad. Mm-hmm. I didn't mention that because this is not my therapy session. Shout out Michelle. And, and this is so, this is why you know what, what Mark says is important because even though we may not see that perspective, the fact that you feel that way. You have to say it. Um, uh, what have we learned? Perspective is a lot. Do you know 100%. what I mean? So you know when you when you were saying yeah. stuff and you were and you were questioning me, I was thinking the, the problem with this is that what we're doing is we're making this very coy centric. But there is a sentiment. There's a perspective. The, the the issue is that even if it, say it's not true, mm-hmm. say black men are showing up and doing amazing, yeah. Let's say yeah. But if black women feel this way, that's still something that has to be dealt with. Mm-hmm. If even if it means break, even if it means you lot changing how you're talking, so that we can understand something. Do you know what I mean? Like, but I just think the the rate of sexual abuse, the rate of rape, the rate of of um the amount of I don't know too many black girls that haven't told me too many girls full stop, but I'm with black girls that haven't that haven't told me that something on towards happened, but below the age of sixteen with a that they could, that when they brought it up, no one was listening. All of these things you need to understand is going to create an impression that we're living in a fucked. And I'm not saying it's all black men that are perpetrating these things, of course. But I'm saying if black women are not feeling safe, and even if black men are not perpetrators, if they're not feeling safe, there's a conversation that needs to be had. We can't just shout at each other and say whoever wins this one argument or this point is the winner of the whole thing. Do you know what I mean? You are a phenomenal um person when it comes to speaking. It's, it's so easy, but I, it doesn't take away from the fact that this is a real thing that. 
lots and lots of black women feel. If you want to start a, a, a clubhouse or thing like this, talk about the hardships of a black woman. It will fill up. Is it that we're just moany or does it, does it, do we have valid points? And I genuinely, from my experience and the experience of the women around me, genuinely think that there's valid points. So yeah, yeah, you guys may not be fucked up and maybe your cousins may not be fucked up, but somebody's fucking up. And so we, we can't just ignore that just because you lot know your conscience is clear. Do you know what I mean? Quick, quick point. Um, yeah. Can you guys remember during the protests, um, uh, John Boyega yes. came out and he's a hyper visible black man. Mm. And I think a lot of these um, uh, concerns kind of come down to black women wanting hyper visible, cool, saucy black men, the, the men that other black men respond to, to actually act as vocal, as visible when they need them to be. And because when certain things happen, that is not seen, 100% they are vocal about this. Mm. That's that's a lot of the, the reasons as to why it is women are basically saying, black women are saying, you guys are not basically protecting us. So that's just that's just my take on this. No, 100%. Um, and in all honesty, yeah, do you know what? If Megan did lie, there, there may be some pride that would want people to not really come and talk and say whatever. But if Megan did lie, that's fucked. Do you know what I mean? But if, if Tori lied as well, that's fucked. But somebody, somebody's doing something <laughs> wrong. It's got to the point where they may have to just, do you know what I mean? Just hope no one, because yeah, one, something's crazy there. But um, we this was a heavy conversation. I think it's time to get somebody out of here. Let's jump into Dan out of here. <laughs> Well, here we are. This, uh, yeah, it can't go nowhere else, can it? Nah, it's got, it really has to go one place. Oh, it could just go to all of these lot, man. I'll be honest with you, because like, this is this this is bad, man. This is bad. And like, I'm not doing what, what you were doing. I'm not paying all men with the same brush, but if the hat fits... That's then, what I was doing. If the hat fits... <laughs> you can't listen. Fits, that's what I was doing. <laughs> that's go. what I was doing. Let it go. No, because that's Let what I was go. doing. I literally said at least five men. You said it 400 <laughs> I'm times. So sorry, I'm so no, sorry. because you can't... I'm joking. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If you I'm say sorry, something yeah. wrong... If you say something that's a lie, yeah, then it, I'm not gonna take Buzz. it. Gosh, <laughs> that was good. That's good. You see, you learn. You, that's how <laughs> don't, you don't patronize me. Oh, no, that was good. God. That was. Do- you was right. You oh, was right. Oh my gosh. Okay, sorry. Esther, come home. <laughs> Esther, come home immediately. We need to flog him. Alright. Uh, oh, can I get oh, Westwood? You are done at it, but I think all you, all you questionable men. <laughs> And abusive men. And enablers. And enablers. These are all done out here, man. These are do things in your pastime. I think, like, I would charge a lot of men to go and have conversations with the females in their life. Like, anyone, a lot mm-hmm. of them. You speak to most women. And it's, it's from all races. You speak to most women, they will tell you an experience in their life where they've experienced some form of abuse or felt super uncomfortable in a situation at the hands of men. And it's and it's too common. Like if you speak that, it's too too common. If you, it's not a nice conversation to have, so you won't know. But if you actually speak to people, you will realize the majority of the women you know have experienced that, and that's too many. So obviously, listening to this, you think to yourself, okay, well, I'm not an abuser, so it doesn't count to me. But if there's so many women out there that's experienced it, there's so many men out there that's doing it. You know what I'm trying to say? And I don't know how we, I don't know how we stop it. I don't know how we, I don't know what we need to do as a society. I don't know how we please this thing. I don't know what we do, but the man them just need to be better, man. Like I said, and don't, if, the, if, it's, if it's not, if, it does, if it's not um, applicable to you, then just ignore it. Share it and send a message on to someone else, someone who does need to hear it. And if you do need to hear it, you need to look into the mirror. You need to go and find help. Yeah. You need to, I don't know. There's, honestly, like your mental health, these things need addressing, but, Men, we just need to be better and we need to protect our women. We need to protect our black women. You heard what Koi's been saying all day. You know what I'm trying to say? Especially us good men with our platforms. We need to stand up and let our voices be counted. You get me? Because I feel like men listen to other men. Well, there you go. Which is flawed in itself. But men listen to other men way more. Like, they just do. If they hear it from someone that they rate or they listen to or whatever, it does land more. I don't know why it doesn't land when a woman says it, but... That's it, man. Abusive men... You and your leader Westwood are out of it. <laughs> Done out of it. I said your leader Westwood. Um, yeah, it's possible that Westwood wouldn't even get um arrested wherever because I don't know if anything that was discussed qualifies a crime. Unless new cases, like unless new cases come out, he won't get arrested. Yeah. But can you see why it's important for women to talk even when they're not gonna believe be believed or whatever? Because it does start this this waterfall effect. Do you know what I mean? Mm. 
it's mad that these women have put themselves out there. And I, that's why I said, I think it's good that they did cover their faces. I'd like to see more people come out. I think, I think the same thing that happened with the R. Kelly thing will happen, that like more cases will come out and then there'll be more current and stuff that they can actually deal with. Then, because if that doesn't happen, then it's... Oh, well. anyway, and there's a see. whole conversation there also about the fetishization of black women, but I don't know if we've got time to go into that. But like a lot of the, uh, yes, yeah, uh, yeah. What his fascination? Yeah, like, I don't mind. Like obviously, I'm, I know the source that black women yield. Do you know what I mean? I know I understand that they're incredibly beautiful, and I don't really even think there's a problem with. I think it's just sad that he just that he just turned to that like, well, allegedly just turned to abuse because I don't think. Is it that like, do you have a problem that he just likes black women? If he's in the no. circles and if no, he's in the I, no, I, I can I can logically understand why you would like black women. Like, that's not <laughs> sir. Have you seen? Oh my gosh, let someone touch down. Like black women are a, a brilliant something, Mwah, delicious. I think what it is though, it's almost like it's almost. Like, I don't have a problem if you have a particular way of doing stuff in it, but if you look, you know, sometimes when you look back on someone's behavior, you're just like, hmm, that whole yeah, baby, like all of that. It, it gives. It's almost like he, he liked a certain caricature of a black woman. And that is a bit uncomfortable. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It was like, but I'm saying, being black is doesn't he, mean you're... Is he, just, is he just a creep, yeah? So if he liked Chinese women, this would have been happening to Chinese women. If he liked white women, this would have been happening to white yeah, women. Yeah, yeah. So is he just a creep or is he targeting black women? Because that's what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm saying. Like, things like this is important. Like, it's it, not important because it doesn't really matter. No, no, saying, no, but, no. But for the for the conversation you're trying to have, I understand what you're trying to say. I, I'm not West. I'm not Tim Westwood. I don't know what his motivations are. But I would say, when you like a black woman, and you can like anybody for any damn reason, their intelligence, their humor, their money, whatever, you can like anybody for any damn reason. I think what is a bit what looks a bit weird and funny to me, and I'm not saying this is a crime, maybe women that are more qualified or people that are more qualified will know this, is it feels like he wanted a a a, a hood. Like it, it felt like it, it felt like a fetishization because it wasn't a celebration of it didn't feel like a celebration, like of. Oh, it's like, I don't know how to describe it. It's like that guy was a son of a bishop, right? Huh? Hmm? He's a son of a bishop, right? Who? Yeah. I didn't know. I thought he said he's a son of a bitch. I said, oh, wow. yeah, I was forgetting. I was forgetting. I was forgetting. I was forgetting. You... Okay, Brent. I was like, oh, <laughs> right, <laughs> let it off. Yeah, he's a son of a, a bishop. Yeah, yeah or, yeah, yeah, or yeah. A, cl- a clergyman yeah, or something like that. And he absolutely loves black culture. Yes. He's changed his entire imper- appearance. His, his, how he talks, and many can everything. say he helps black culture as well. Do you know what I mean? Like some woman, she put out a tweet, and people can say this is dramatizing or whatever, but she put out a tweet, and it was something I felt as well. Like there was a lot of parallels between, I don't know if you watched the documentary with Jimmy Savile and, and, and stuff like that, in terms of like doing a lot that looked outwardly really, really good and selfless almost, but then doing something that was like very on on towards as well like something there was and she she made three key comparisons but that was the one that I I thought oh I thought that as well it was it's like oh. that it's misdirection you're doing this here yeah yeah and, yeah. and then hair. this you know I mean? uh, the the bottom line is that with and the problem with this yeah it's the court of popular opinion there is no vindication from this in terms of like p- this isn't something where it was six like even with the Jimmy okay even with the Jimmy Savile thing a lot of people had to come out and say we kind of heard about this we kind of knew about this kind of thing and I think it's similar with the Tim Westwood though I'm, I'm not saying he's a, I'm not Whatever, with Jim, with um Tim Westwood, it was like, I be, like I I be, I've seen I've heard it I've seen it I've seen things that lend itself into this story. I didn't see him a sort of woman. I didn't see any of that. I'm not saying that, but I I saw things that feel consistent with what this woman you know what this woman's saying. So uh, these women were these women were saying. Um, but yeah, and sometimes I just think, why is there even an argument? These women said what they said. Um, and let's see what happens next. You know, sometimes it's a it's a support if you empathize. Well, that stuff's dangerous because I was with a man and he's like, bro, there's no evidence. So the thing, and I'm saying, okay, cool, there's no evidence here. Yeah? But just because there's no evidence, it doesn't mean you have to diminish the claims that they're making. You know what I'm trying to say? So just but because. Are claims not evidence to a degree, no? No. Because so, people... what? So, so no, listen, listen to what I'm saying to finish because I know a lot of people, I've heard a lot of people say this like, we, without evidence, without evidence. But I feel like seven women coming out with stories that you did something to them is not something that can be dismissed. Like it, you, like, not necessarily dismissed, but it's not evidence. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not a sign it's not, of guilt. Okay. It's, it's, it's not. It's, it's not. It's not proof. It's not okay. proof of guilt. Okay. So what I mean is that I think it shouldn't be just because I went. Okay. So when you when we you say talking evidence, about eyewitness, um, when we say hmm? evidence, do we mean like you say eyewitness? Is that what you're talking about? Eyewitness account? No. Yeah, like, well, these women were in it, so they're claiming they are eyewitnesses. Like they saw what happened to them in it, kind of thing. But I'm saying, so when we say evidence, are we saying like? 
some there's not like, even like a paper trail because obviously none of this didn't even go to the police. Yeah. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So there's no like obviously naturally you think no one is not just gonna make this up. And there ain't no yeah. smoke about fire. Seven yeah, yeah. people who don't know each other, there's consistencies here. All right, mm. cool. But facts is facts. You, okay. There's you you this people who want to be like that could turn around and say, you any, anyone could just come anyone and say can this. Say that. Okay. Someone could just come and say this stuff about me. And it's yeah. just, that, do you get what I'm trying to say? Like yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. It's, no, it's, I'm just, I'm just, I'm literally just trying to. My have thing would be what I'm saying, I'm saying to the to president. I'm saying, look, it's facts. That's why you have to go on the premises of if he done this, this is how you feel. Rare, rare, mm. rare. So that's 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 cool. There ain't no evidence, but the fact that there's no evidence that makes him guilty, that still doesn't mean at the same time while it's going on and while it's playing out that mm. you get to diminish the claims that these girls are saying. Yeah, you know what I'm trying to say that you can't play it down because mm. if it turns out to be real, then you're being that like someone's actively living through it, innit? So. You can't just, you can't, even though there's no proof of what you've done, but you have to take what they're saying serious and into consideration. You know mm. what I say? You have to empathize with it. You have to. Yeah. With whether you know, before you even know what's going on or not, because someone's come out and said this for a reason. And people have decided they made a documentary for a reason. I know, I don't know how it works, but with all the media and all this, and all this legal, you, it's hard, it must be hard to just go around saying stuff like people. There's bare things they would have to check before yeah. they, like, dots, then I's they need to dot, T's they need to cross before that went out. So, there's some, there's, there's something going on there. Yeah, I think I think for me, it may, maybe I think you lot are right because imagine being innocent and this just being some wicked whatever. But I feel like sometimes that smoke without fire thing is something that when it comes to matters like this, is is just something that's hard for me to let go because I'm just like, you're right, they can be false claims. But I think seven women going on TV putting this together. But you're right. Okay, like Evid- I said, for ev- me, there's evidence not, and then there's. I'm not gonna say it's gonna validate, it, but just for me, the way it would work, I would like to see. I would like to see more claims. Yeah, because I, I would hope that. And that what inspired, happens? Yeah, do you get what I'm yes. to say? And what happens is that so if there's someone's story that was recent or some story where they have evidence or some, do you know what I mean? Then that's when legal stuff can happen, and I think that is necessary. Well, to... well, after what? If you get like four more girls popped up, said, so you know what? I watched the documentary. I can't even. I'm not even going to think. No, I'm not even going to. I'm, I'm going to talk, even though it's still the same situation. But it's like it 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 adds to it. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Because that's that's reactionary. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. That it's like. Like when all these people died and stuff like that, Jimmy Savile, like once them men they passed, everybody came out. They mm. started, they they started going and started, mm. and started going and started going, yeah. and it's hard. And it's just it's like hard to ignore. yeah, so because yeah. when people feel like so now now it's out in the light and it's there, the ball's rolling. There's gonna be people that might feel like you know what, let me throw momentum to it. It's, it's, yeah. it's done now. It's out here. Let me do it. So that so yeah, you would hope to see something like that. It's crazy because over the last two weeks, there's just been so many things. Similar or around this or about it. The world system. needs healing, man. It's a yucky place. This is why I don't go online. That's why I'm not mm. on there. Yeah, big facts. Yeah. yeah but um, thing. yeah, man. With that, let's go into the final part of the show. Yeah, thank our guest. Yes, yeah, thank our guest for sure. Um, yo, so that was me and Margs holding it down. Esther's away. She'll be back next week. We'll be back next week as well on Tuesday. All right. So you guys get ready. And like we said, up until the first, you can see the full shows. Um, so if there's any particular, do we care if they want particular guests? Do we, As in if they ask? If they ask, they're like, yo, can you get yeah, this you, one? You do the hashtag can... ask all you want. Yes, there yeah. we go. Oh, yeah, this, hit them guys, up. Listen, you can be As as involved in this show as possible. Tell to come true. In fact, if you are so involved, Brent might pay you. Come on. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But thank you guys so much for tuning in. And make sure you follow us on all social media platforms. Like and share. And for us to really reflect popular culture, we need you guys conversating with us. We need you guys to let us know what you're interested in, what you think about. I'm not saying we're going to listen all the time, but we're going to try. Um, And also make sure if you want to be involved, we have obviously we have amazing segments every day on the show. Um, if you want to be involved, make sure you send your voice notes and text messages to 075-648-41073. So that's 075-6484-1073. Brent, has anyone sent you any news yet? Mama, we didn't put this um, first announcement of the phone out. So they don't know. If- oh, shit. Yeah. Breaking news! <laughs> <laughs> we have a new element of the show <laughs> where you guys <laughs> can send in messages and voice notes if you have any questions, any queries, you want to ask for a friend, you want to do anything where you communicate with us, you want us to, I don't know, maybe you want to shout someone out. We might do a shout-out segment. We are shaped by popular culture, so let us know what's popular for you. You know when I get in my bag, it's mm. dangerous, you know? <laughs> when I get in the presenting bag, it's... it's a, okay, so- Wait for me to leave, man. All right, cool. So yeah, so we have a new number. So if you guys want to be a participant.
participate in the show, but you don't have to wake up at 5 a.m. to do that, then make sure you send any voice notes or text messages to 07564841073. I'm going to do that again. 07564841073. Some of you might know what Brent looks like. Emmanuel. Shoot your Emmanuel, shot. Emmanuel, Emmanuel is a, a taken of, man. A couple of uh, segments that they could basically be sending these voice notes um, to. Yes. Oh, yes. So, sis, what would you do? And asking for a friend. So if you're obviously, especially for the ladies out there, got some dilemmas that you want to hear Esther or Koi give some advice on, send it into that number there. Boy, boy. Um, I'd be giving good advice. My advice is about you living your best life in the moment. <laughs> Fuck the consequences for a little bit. Um, and Esther's advice is, I, I feel like it will get you to heaven quicker. Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> I feel like it's one of them advices that if you take it, you may not have as much fun, but you're going to be happy in the long run. So it's up to you. It's what, it's what energy are you on? Um, so yeah, but I give good advice to you. Let me not put myself down. I'm giving good advice. Um, okay. And also guys, you can watch every show live from the beginning of May mm-hmm. on Patreon. Beginning of June. For June. All right. June cool. 1st. Yeah, June 1st. All right, guys, let me just say that again. And also guys, you can watch every show live from the beginning of June 1st on our Patreon, right? So that's June 1st, the beginning of June there, right there. Um, Head over there to see all the wonderful perks you can get by supporting the day after. You'll be able to interact with us, ask us questions, and so much more. You know, I can tell when Brent... And Iman do stuff because I'm just like, yeah, this is not how I talk, but I love it. Um, <laughs> and for those who want to inquire about the show, maybe you want to be on, maybe you have an interesting story. Do you know what I mean? Then make sure you email us at the day after at the new black.com and the black is spelt with the X. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. It's been me, it's been Margs, Esther shaking bum in Nigeria, Iman's in the building, and Brent is over there pretending like he doesn't want to be famous. Um, but yeah, do you have anything to say, Margs? Gang. All right, then.